At the end of our Play Carriers 2022 video, we asked you all which play carriers you wanted us to review next. While the Cry Precision SPC topped the list, the Agilite K19 came in a strong second, just behind the SPC. As some of you may know, we have the incredible privilege of being able to collaborate with the best companies in each of the markets that we serve. Military, law enforcement, safety and devices, sport, and aviation. We have an extensive library of kit that we use to make sure that our ICG ecosystem integrates smoothly with the best products in use by professionals and civilians the world over. Despite this, none of us had ever heard of the K-19 prior to these requests. In fact, we had to look it up. In doing so, we learned quite a bit, and we're going to share everything that we learned in our evaluation process during the course of this video, including the debut of a new segment called Thermal Transmission, where we demonstrate the ability of a plate carrier to efficiently deal with heat. We can't wait to share it with you, and you are not going to want to miss it. While there's already a lot of reviews out there for the K-19, together in this video, we are going to figure out, does the K-19 live up to the hype? Stay tuned to this episode of Core Performance Insights to find out. Ice Age Ecosystem Integration is the first category we are going to cover since thermoregulation is the next night vision and Ice Age Ecosystem Integration is the genesis of this video series. The shoulder pads on the Agilite K19 measure approximately 2 inches thick from body side to world side, making them not just the thickest shoulder pad on any plate carrier we've reviewed to date, but the thickest shoulder pad on any plate carrier we have ever seen. If anyone has seen a thicker shoulder pad on a plate carrier, please let us know in the comments below and we'll update our data. When it comes to convective thermoregulation, the K19 is challenging because it is lined entirely with spacer mesh covered foam. While the spacer mesh construction of the Agilite K19 shoulder pads would benefit greatly from our ice fence technology, the thickness of the shoulder pad alone makes integration difficult. That said, our ice fence classic heavy loadout plate carrier shoulder pads can be attached. Just be aware that this will create a shoulder pad that is two and a quarter inches thick, two inches from the K19 shoulder pads and one quarter inch from the Ice Fence Classic. The Agilite K19 shoulder pads have a uniform width of three inches, eliminating some of the greatest benefits of our contoured Ice Fence Aero minimalist plate carrier shoulder pads, which use a 50% taper from three inches down to 1.5 inches to preserve full range of motion while ventilating and distributing load. We do not recommend using our Ice Fence Aero minimalist plate carrier shoulder pads with the K19 because the uniform width of the K19 shoulder pads negates the contour advantage of Ice Fence Aero. As for conductive thermoregulation, the Agilite K19 is the most difficult platform integration we've reviewed to date. Since the Agilite K19 plate bag liners are made entirely of spacer mesh, they do not have any loop velcro, molly, or laser cut maps. There is no way to integrate our IMS Pro Combo like on our Ice Plate Exo or the Cry Precision AVS. This means the K19 cannot take advantage of any of the conductive cooling, heating, hydration capabilities of Ice Plate Curve. There are only two members of our Ice Age ecosystem which integrate with the K19, the IMS Combo and the Ice Shield Plus Plate Carrier Hand Warmer. For those who are not familiar with the IMS combo, it enables any molly equipped plate carrier to take advantage of 1.5 liters or 50 ounces of hard cell hydration in a slim form factor that is conformal to a medium e sappy plate at just one inch thin. Much like temperature, weight impacts human performance in a persistent and significant way but you may not be familiar with some of the science on the subject, which comes principally from Nike co-founder and legendary University of Oregon track and field coach Bill Bowerman. Part of the original PW era Nike, Bowerman discovered that removing just one ounce from a shoe eliminates 55 pounds of lift over the distance of one mile when calculated using the gait of a six-foot-tall runner. This table shows how the K19 stacks up against the leading plate carriers on the market today in terms of dry weight. As you can see, the K19 is nearly twice as heavy as the leading plate carriers on the market today. The FCPC V5 by Ferro Concepts comes in at 21.6 ounces, while the SPC from Cry Precision comes in at 22.9 ounces, 
and Cry Precision's JPC 2.0 comes in at 22.95 ounces. The Agilate K19, as you can see here, comes in at 41.6 ounces dry. For additional context using Bowerman's formula, this table shows how much weight savings you would get if you used any of these carriers in lieu of the K19 in terms of lift effort over the course of one mile. In other words, you'd save 2,461.8 pounds over the course of one mile if you used a Cry Precision JPC 2.0 instead of a K19. You'd save 2,640 pounds over the course of one mile if you used a Ferro Concepts FCPC V5 instead of a K19. You'd save 2,699.4 pounds over the course of one mile if you used a Cry Precision SPC instead of a K19. In the show notes below, you'll find a link to our plate carrier weight calculator, which can be found in the Insights section of our website. It contains weight data for all of the carriers in this plate carrier overview series, along with weight data on armor plates, pouches, and more. Wet weight is easily the most underappreciated technical consideration when it comes to modern play carrier selection. Whether sweat or salt water, moisture retention has a massive negative impact on human performance. In our testing, the wet weight of the Agilite K19 came to 62.8 ounces. This table shows how the wet weight of the K19 stacks up against those same leading plate carriers from the dry weight testing. The Ferro Concepts FCPC V5 comes in at 31.5 ounces, while Cry Precision's SPC comes in at 34.9 ounces and the JPC 2.0 at 39.6 ounces. The Agilite K19 comes in as the heaviest plate carrier at 62.8 ounces. Much like dry weight, the K19 is significantly heavier than other leading plate carriers on the market today when wet. As an example, the K19 is 45% heavier than the JPC 2.0 when wet. Let's take another look at Bowerman's formula to see what type of weight and effort savings you would get if you used any of these carriers in lieu of the K19 in terms of lift effort over the course of one mile. In other words, you'd save 3,062 pounds over the course of one mile if you used a Cry Precision JPC 2.0 instead of a K19. You'd save 3,682 pounds over the course of one mile if you used a Cry Precision SPC instead of a K19. You'd save 4,131 pounds over the course of one mile if you used a Ferro Concepts FCPC V5 instead of a K19. Like most modern play carriers and armor systems, the K19 does not have any natively integrated thermoregulation or hydration systems in the design. According to the Agilite website, quote, the rear of the K19 plate bags have a triple layer of low-profile foam, end quote, embedded in them. Foam is an insulating material, which is why it is used as insulation in things like beverage coolers. When it comes to hydration, you can molly any standard plate carrier hydration system onto the back of a K19, like our IMS Combo or any molly-capable offering from Camelback, Source, or other manufacturers. <laughs> To quantify the thermoregulation capabilities of plate carriers, we're introducing a new segment starting with this video called Thermal Transmittance. Don't worry, we're going to conduct this test for all plate carriers we've already reviewed to keep things perfectly consistent. So what exactly is thermal transmittance and why should any of us care? What does it have to do with plate carriers? Thermal transmittance is the transfer of heat through matter. In our case, the matter is the body facing section of a plate carrier plate bag. If a wall or plate bag is well insulated, it will have low thermal transmittance. This is ideal for a home, car, or cold weather jacket as they are designed to protect you from the elements. If that same wall or plate bag is poorly insulated, it will have high thermal transmittance. This is ideal for active or athletic apparel. Think running clothes, PT gear, combat uniforms, or anything you wear when under heavy athletic exertion where your body needs to dump excess heat generated from effort. Since kit is already insulating by nature, you want to find gear, especially plate carriers and body armor, that have the highest possible thermal transmittance. In other words, you want to find plate carriers and body armor that have the minimum amount of insulation. This will allow your body's natural thermoregulation mechanisms to work as efficiently as possible. Preserving this natural function decreases the possibility of you becoming a heat casualty, keeping you in the fight and increasing survivability for you and your team. Some plate carriers and hydration packs, like our Ice Plate XO and IMS Pro Combo, can even augment your body's natural thermoregulation mechanisms, boosting your performance in the process. 
We'll cover thermal transmittance, thermal resistance, heat transfer coefficients, and much more later in this Insights video series. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn the basic methods of heat transfer and how they apply to your gear, check out the awesome infographics we put together in our Insights blog article titled The Methods of Heat Transfer. It's linked in our show notes below. To measure the thermal transmittance of a plate carrier, this will be our experimental design. First, we used our FLIR camera to take the surface temperature reading of the body-facing side of the plate bag at room temperature. Next, we placed a single ice plate curve fresh out of the freezer into the plate bag of each plate carrier. Then, once we've closed the plate bag, we'll place a Tenkate Level 3 hard armor plate on top of the plate bag for 30 seconds to simulate the effect of putting on the plate carrier. We are using a shorter exposure time to make sure we test efficiency and not capacity. Finally, we'll remove the Tenkate Level 3 hard armor plate from the subject plate bag and take a new FLIR surface temperature reading. Here's what we discovered. The baseline surface temperature of the Cry SPC is 69 degrees. The ice plate inside surface temperature of the Cry SPC is 55 degrees. The Ferro Concepts FCPC V5 had a baseline surface temperature of 75.8 degrees with an ice plate inside surface temperature of 67 degrees. The JPC 2.0 has a baseline surface temperature of 75.9 degrees with an ice plate inside surface temperature of 55 degrees. The AVS was super interesting because it has different front and rear plate bags. The baseline surface temperature of the front plate bag was 76 degrees, while the ice plate inside surface temperature of the front plate bag was 67 degrees. However, the AVS's rear plate bag has a baseline surface temperature of 75 degrees with an ice plate inside surface temperature of just 71 degrees. The Agilite K19 has a baseline surface temperature of 75.6 degrees with an ice plate inside surface temperature of 70.9 degrees. What do these numbers mean? The smaller the spread between the baseline surface temperature and the ice plate inside surface temperature, the lower the thermal transmittance of that plate bag. Plate carriers with these readings will trap and retain more heat, making you hotter. The larger the spread between baseline surface temperature and the ice plate inside surface temperature, the higher the thermal transmittance of that plate carrier. Plate bags with these larger spreads are better at removing heat to let your body's natural thermoregulation mechanisms work as normally as possible. The Agilite K19 has a spread of 4.7 degrees Fahrenheit, while the Cry Precision SPC has a spread of 14 degrees Fahrenheit. The K19 has nearly the same spread as the Cry Precision AVS rear plate bag, but without the load-bearing capability of the AVS harness. The Agilite K19 is built from materials regularly used in basic plate carriers today. 1000D Cordura, mil-spec polymer, hook and loop, nylon, and spacer mesh. When it comes to unique features, the K19 is loaded for bear. Whether or not these unique features add value for you and your application is another question altogether, and one only you can answer, but hopefully this data will help. Agilite touts the its Israeli roots and IDF work as a USP, or unique selling proposition. How much credibility should you give this USP? Well, that is up to you and your specific objective functions, but we'd encourage you to do your own independent research into things like wars in which the IDF has been involved to decide how credible or not credible you see this particular USP. The first unique feature we noticed about the K19 is the front shoulder strap attachment mechanism. The front plate bag has a six inch strip of loop Velcro that faces the body. Theoretically, this is so the shoulder straps can be adjusted for fit. However, this feature adds an additional three quarters of an inch of thickness to the front plate bag, and that is in addition to the thickness of the front plate bag itself, which is already 0.5 inches thick at the thinnest point we could find. And that's without an armor plate inside. The K19 features four quick-release buckles, two on the shoulders and two on the cummerbund. These are not first spear tubes, but rather a model with which we are not familiar and could not easily identify from anything in our sample library. Agilite does not provide specifics on their website. The female receiver buckles for the cummerbund are permanently attached to the K19 plate bag, while the female buckles for the shoulder straps can be removed. The cummerbund is also unique to the K19. Constructed of simple nylon webbing, the cummerbund attaches to the front plate bag using the aforementioned mystery quick-release buckle. On the rear plate bag, the cummerbund is secured using branded G-hooks. The webbing cummerbund consists of three rows and three columns of molly up front, but no molly anywhere else. Instead, the back of the cummerbund has two strands of webbing used for sizing, adjustment, and stretch. Kind of. As you can see, the cummerbund has just a quarter inch of stretch on each side. 
The amount of stretch is not adjustable. It is also worth noting that for individuals who are roughly 5'8 to 6 feet tall and weigh anywhere from 165 to 200 pounds with 40 to 42 inch chests, you will be left with spare webbing that measures roughly one inch thick when secured with the included keepers. The K19 also features a pair of webbing loops roughly three quarters of the way up with a corresponding pair on the bottom of the plate bag which are used for Agilite's backpack called the AMAP3. Last but certainly not least, the K19 features wings on the side of the front plate bag that measure approximately 1.5 inches wide by 6 inches tall. The intent here is supposed to make the quick release buckles more comfortable. Since our video format takes a purely empirical approach, we won't comment on whether or not they are comfortable since that is purely subjective. However, we can say that objectively, this additional spacer mesh and foam will insulate and trap more body heat, which will degrade performance in the field. The Agilite K19 uses industry standard attachment mechanisms, Velcro, Swift Clip, G-Hook, Molly. When it comes to variety, the K19 comes in one size, which Agilite classifies as medium slash large. It is offered in Multicam, Ranger Green, Wolf Gray, Multicam Black, Black, and Coyote. According to the Agilite website, the K19 is a one size fits all plate carrier that will fit all body types, shapes, and sizes. Agilite says the K19 has a one size fits most plate bag design. It can accept small, medium, or large sappy slash e-sappy armor plates up to 1.5 inches thick. Further, Agilite says the K19 fits 10 by 12 plates, however, XL size plates will not fit. The country of origin, commonly abbreviated as COO, is an incredibly important consideration when it comes to plate carrier selection. COO is a dependable but not absolute indicator of innovation, quality, and craftsmanship. The packaging and the hang tag on the K19 were devoid of any country of origin markings. The hang tag says designed in Israel, but it made no mention of where the K19 is manufactured. In our effort to be as impartial as possible, we did what no mainstream media outlet will ever do, reach out to the source for comment. We submitted our query on 27 October and received a reply two days later on 29 October. Agilite told us, the K-19 is manufactured in Israel and Vietnam, with their own people supervising production and quality. Agilite also told us that the specs are the same in both Israel and Vietnam, and that they import the same materials from the USA to both Israel and Vietnam. In examining the packaging, however, there is no indication of where each K-19 is manufactured. It might be Israel, it might be Vietnam, but either way, it is not disclosed on an individual basis, at least not in a way that we could find. Agilite sells the K19 for $289 for the plate carrier itself, while the pincer placard is an additional $69.90. Here's how that compares to other carriers on the market today. The JPC comes in at $241.90, the SPC at $252, the K19 at $289 as previously mentioned, the FCPC V5 at $385, and the AVS at $661.40. So that's going to do it for our plate carrier overview of the Agilite K19. We hope that all of the data and the information that we shared was helpful and useful. But we really want to know, what do you think? Does the K19 live up to the hype? And how does it stack up against the JPC 2.0, the SPC, and the FCPC V5? Let us know down in the comments below. And to keep up with all of the latest in all aspect thermal regulation, don't forget to follow us on Instagram on our feed at Core Performance, and also to join our Launchpad email list so that we can build a superhuman future together. I'm your host, Justin Lee, and until next time, stay frosty.